it's difficult at this time of year for people to sit back and think some of the big things that are happening. One of them is that the level of manipulation by central ban- central banks with interest rates and then the fallout through that. Victor Dare joins me live from the trading desk right now. Victor, are you one of four guys still working in August? <laughs> A lot of people are away in August, and uh, when they're away, uh, the you know volumes of the market get thin, trading's choppy, and uh, also a lot of things that don't seem to make any sense seem to happen in August, and then of course you come back to September and it's like getting hit the side of the head with a fish, you know. <laughs> I, Mike, I have to tell you, here's what I see: the most important thing that's going on right now in the market, and this just plays right so perfectly to what Jeff Owen just had to say about don't be seduced by yield i'm telling you the hunt for yield is just going parabolic all over the world it is a risk on market the i think people are figuring the only risk out there is getting left behind yeah, it, but again, this is the, as I say, the manipulation of the central banks. They're artificially keeping rates low. Did you see, for example, that, uh, Italy's one year bonds went negative? Now, this is a country with a, its banking system falling apart, or at least certainly on, uh, uh, you know, on the critical list. And, uh, yet those yields, I mean, it's just not, a, uh, part of reality because of the level of manipulation going on. And you're right. I mean, we talk about that all the time. It forces people to look for other places. That's one of the reasons, Vic, that I've been continually bullish on the overall stock market when a lot of the other fundamentals don't support it. I'm just saying the money's got to go somewhere. People want some kind of yield there. And that's been, uh, been one of our monster recommendations since uh, March of 2009. Get a real high quality stock with a good dividend dividend yield and uh those are the ones that are going to be in demand well certainly uh, the stock markets keep making new highs i would say this that the major markets in new york are sort of creeping higher while we'll call them lesser quality markets around the world are surging higher let me give you this though uh back in 2000 there was three percent of the stocks in the s p 500 that had a dividend yield greater than the 10-year bond now 64% of the stocks have a, a dividend yield greater than the 10-year. Mike, and here is, here's the granddaddy of it all. Back in the 1990s, you could double your money. If you put it into an 8% yield, you could double your money in nine years. It now takes you 500 years to double your money with the interest rates we have. That's a fabulous stat to really uh, highlight that difference that's taken place. And again, it's had such a huge uh, influence on where money has gone into various categories. And I, as I, and I think I love that stat also, the comparison between 3% of S&P 500 companies had a dividend yield greater than the 10-year treasuries back in 2000. Yeah, I got 64% now. Now let me come back to the markets there. And uh, what, what do you make of this from a market opportunity? Uh, well, it's, as, as I'm saying, it's August, and here's a great example of August. The Canadian dollar, okay, closed mm-hmm. higher every day this week. We have had the best weekly close in six weeks on the Canadian dollar. We have, in the technical terms, we've got a weekly key reversal up. This is a week after we got the most horrible trade data and unemployment data last Friday that knocked the Canadian dollar down a full penny in, like, moments. And and here we are no. WTI is up 14% on the week. The U.S. dollar is weak across the board. So I'm seeing this more as a, as a case of the U.S. dollar is weak rather than Canada starting to flex its biceps. But, you know, that's, to me, this is like a, an August type phenomena. When you get to these kind of low markets, I mean, the volume is down, people are away. Do you st- sit in the sidelines then? Because, as you say, there's sort of some, some moves that don't necessarily make sense just because all of a sudden a big order comes in. <laughs> well, I, I do sit on the sidelines, but, you know, I'm not just kind of uh, watching the cartoons. I think I think of myself more as like a tiger in the weeds. You know, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. kind of watching. Nobody knows I'm there, but when I see something, I'm going to pounce on it. And here's a, for instance, nobody knew this. Platinum fell $75 an ounce from Wednesday's highs to Friday's lows. And I saw that happening, and that kind of reinforced my, my idea that the gold market is vulnerable here. Now, I think gold goes higher in the long term, but I think gold, because it had this huge surge of buyers in the gold in the first few months of this year, if the gold market, and it's looked kind of choppy for five weeks now, I think it's at risk of, you know, a little bit of a washout. By that, I mean maybe 100 bucks. Yeah. Good stuff as always, Vic. Uh, You go out and enjoy this beautiful weekend. Thanks, Mike.